Hello, everybody. After a week of really pretty good spring weather here, no no real heat yet, but we had a lot of sunshine. I got a lot of work done in the gardens, a lot of things. Most everything has been transplanted and planted. Think about the only things that I haven't planted yet are beans and my uh, rutabagas or turnips or swedes, whatever you want to call them. Actually, I have two varieties, one that's called York, which we grow around here, and then Rob, uh, the old gardener guy in Finland, sent me some seeds from Finland of the true Swedish Swedes. So I plan to plant a row of each and see how they make out. But uh, take you around and show you the outside gardens and the look inside of the hoop house. And then I'll finish this off with a little clip of the Chanticleer chicks that are one week old today. Well, we have had some decent weather, a week of quite nice sunny days. So I don't think it's got much above 20 degrees yet, but uh, it's a chance to get a lot of gardening done outside. But yesterday it was cloudy, and today we're having rain showers, and there's a fair amount of fog. But right now it's not raining, so I'll start this update with a, a look around at some of what's happening outside. The row of potatoes in the bags in the back are all the Kara potatoes, the ones that I chitted. And I'm not quite certain how long ago it was that I planted them, but as you can see, they're doing beautifully. And the other bags in front of them there, you can see some of them, I guess, that have potatoes sticking up out of those are those seed potatoes that I bought from West Coast Seeds. And uh, there is something up in every bag, some of them just barely coming up, but I couldn't leave them in the hoopos any longer. Things had to be planted in there. And immediately in front are three of the uh, zucchinis that I'm growing this summer. I'll put the plant list once again down below so you can see the variety. And on the far left and right of the front row there, one is the uh, bay laurel and the other one is the uh, my rosemary plant that I've brought out for the summer. This is that mescaloon uh, baby lettuce mixture that I'm plant I have growing in a planter and the stuff is delicious. I've had it in salads, but I tend to graze out of it whenever I'm out here picking bits and pieces of all the different kinds of lettuce in it. And it's on top of one of the two benches that used to be in the hoop house. I find I'm using them more now that uh, I have them outside than I actually use them in the hoop house. There uh, are two window box trays, one either side of it, that have a red oak leaf lettuce in. And the uh, container down on the far end there has got some uh, uh, carrots and it. it's deep enough that I should be able to grow some half decent sized carrots in there. This is on another one of those benches that used to be in the hoop post and this one's down behind the hoop post now. If you hear a fan noise that's the exhaust fan for the hoop post behind me. I'm showing some of the things that uh, I'm growing to put into the uh, perennial vegetable and fruit bed, the area that I've sheet mulched. I hopefully will be able to transplant into there in August. I want the uh, um, manure and whatever out of the chicken coop to have a chance to compost and not be quite so strong. Anyway, this is a Jerusalem artichoke and I've grown them from seeds. I have nine in these grow bags here. Um, the seed looked like a very small sunflower seed, which Jerusalem artichoke is a variety of sunflower long while germinating but once they germinated they've been growing quite well i don't think from seed that they'll either bloom or produce chokes in the first year so i suspect it'll be a a thing that i won't see any benefit from until next year in the front and to the left there is one of the three goji berries that i've grown from seed the two in behind are certainly not as not doing as well as this one. They, they are all starting to put on new leaves, but the shock of bringing them out and uh, putting them in the hoopos, and then I, I thought that was too hot for them, so I brought them outside, caused them to drop a lot of their leaves, but uh, there's new, new leaves coming out everywhere, even on the smaller ones in behind here. So again, that is something could be transplanted into that sheep mulched area. And next to it is the uh, one of the uh, black currants that I grew from rooted cuttings. I started with four, and I'm down to maybe three, I guess. Two of the three aren't looking that good. That's the one that had the most roots and is doing the best. And these are seedlings of a perennial green called Good King Henry. 
this is the better of the, I guess I got five there, there are still some smaller ones that I haven't put in pots yet. According to what I have read on it, uh, in the first year you don't get a great deal out of it because it's very slow to get started. Well, it certainly has been slow to get started. It started that months ago and it's just now got a, a few true leaves, but I think they're probably in large enough pots as slow as they grow. And these were sent to me by uh, Elise Joseph. This is Vinca Minor. And I haven't transplanted it into the garden yet, but the area where I'm going to put it has been seeded with the wildflower seeds, so it will be going in there soon, Elise. So one of my four-foot square uh, raised beds outside of the hoopos. And mostly, well, I've only got two things in it, but most of the area is planted with kohlrabi. Um, and they're starting to come along quite nicely, and so far no cabbage moth damage. I do, however, see slugs. i got to go get the slug bait, put more slug bait out, I guess. And one of my three varieties of heritage or heirloom uh, peas that I'm growing, and these are the ones that I've grown many times in the past, the blue potted pea. I grow it every year and eat some of it, but I grow it to keep the seed going, and I've been giving the seeds away on a, uh, a website run by David who now lives in Switzerland, I guess. Um, anyway, I, I needed more seeds. I, I like to keep them going, so that's, that's what's being planted there. And also sweet peas, the, the garden flower. I uh, germinated a number of those, and I've put them wherever I'm growing peas or beans or whatever, so they'll hopefully bloom in with them. In the center of that bed is the uh, calendula that I grew in the hydroponics. I planted it in there, net pot and all, so I've got to try to remember this fall or whenever it dies back to salvage my net pot, but it's been there for a week or more, so I guess it's going to survive. And two more varieties of heritage or open pollinated peas. Um, along the front here and this side going down that way is a bush variety called crown pea. Uh, I'm anxious to see the blossoms. They're pink and white. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, an heirloom variety that's, I think, been around since the 1800s sometime. And the other two rows, these are sort of the northern end, so it won't shade the, the front part. Along here and along the back is Niplus Ultra, um, which is supposedly a, a pea that climbs very high and uh, has large pods, long pods of, of peas, but time will tell. I'm planning to do what I think Patrick uh, on the One Yard Revolution channel uh, showed earlier this spring, where he's planning to grow his peas first, and then rather than rip the plants out when the peas are finished, just cut the vines off and plant uh, his cucumbers in the same area to grow up the trellises. And the cucumbers will, of course, take advantage of the nitrogen that the peas are fixing in the soil. So. That's the plans for that bed. Well, if you're like me, you've probably never seen this growing before, unless you've recently been to Ethiopia. This is Ethiopian lentils, uh, which I guess are not a true lentil. The, the seed was sort of a gray-green color and uh, quite a bit larger, sort of a flat disc like lentils are, but quite a bit larger than lentils. And it's one of the th seeds that I've bought from the Annapolis Seed Company. Uh, in Nova Scotia. Everything that they sell is an open pollinated heirloom heritage variety and that they have grown successfully in this climate. So I'm anxious to see what this does. You plant them, it said, relatively close together in rows relatively close together because they're going to grow three or four feet tall and they, that way they will sort of support each other. I understand that the blossoms are blue and of course followed by pods of some sort, I guess, with the lentils in and just leave the plants to grow until they're completely mature and the pods start to dry so you can gather the, the seeds for use. So it be interesting to follow those through the in summer. the same bed with the uh, Ethiopian lentils, I have two winter squashes growing. Again, both of these are heirloom varieties and came from Annapolis seed. The first one is early butternut squash and the second one is called Uncle David's Dakota Dessert Squash, which is a buttercup 
squash, supposedly the sweetest of the buttercup squashes. And those seedlings were just barely starting to get their third leaf. So I put them in a couple of days ago and they're appreciating this cool, damp weather, I think, to get established. Well, this is that very deep, new raised bed, uh, 20 inches deep, I guess, with some of the things. Everything is, is growing quite well in it. They're early days yet, but those little things there are the salsify. Uh, the first two things here, the salsify and the parsnips, were sent to me by Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland, and they're up and doing well. I didn't get a complete germination on the salsify, Rob, but uh, enough that I'll be able to see what it looks like anyway. And moving up here, those are the parsnips. I think I planted them quite thinly, and uh, I think I got excellent germination on those. And moving further down, they really need to be thinned now, but that's the Belgian endive, the Whitloof chicory. I haven't done any thinning yet. I'm wondering if they get a little bit bigger, if I can transplant the ones that I thin out of there. Anyway, we'll give it a try. Well, I guess I got finished videoing outside just in time. It's not raining really, but it's starting to drizzle and sprinkle again. So give you a look around inside of the hoopos to finish this off. The garlic is doing very well. Um, gee, I don't know, two and a half feet tall, I guess, some of that stuff down there, but nice thick stalks too, so I'm, I'm hopeful of uh, large cloves of garlic under it. It wasn't advertised as an elephant garlic, but it's what I consider an elephant garlic. It's four very large cloves on the head. And the tomatoes have been uh, moved out, the space in between each plant. And there's a couple of uh, eggplant down at the end and then two smart pots at the very end there with uh, uh, cucumbers in. One is that rocky one, the small cucumber, and the other one is just a pickling cucumber, but they've only been in a day or two and there's no germination yet. Onions are looking okay, and down beyond that are the, the beets and some herbs are looking okay. The peppers, I'm, I'm pleased with the peppers, but... Uh, Rob sent me a, uh, a video link explaining the crinkly leaves as a calcium deficiency. Well, I've given them more of the organic fertilizer that I'm using because it says it's 9% calcium. So It won't straighten out the crinkly leaves that are already there. You'll know it's successful if the uh, new leaves aren't crinkly when they come out. But at any rate, they're, they're producing chilies. I'll give you a close-up of those in a minute. I guess you can make out the chilies. There are lots of green chilies on two of the varieties. That one is the Big Balm, uh, round uh, cherry-type hot pepper. And the other one that's producing lots of chilies right now are, is the cayenne, long cayenne. Uh, lots of green chilies on those. The Thai chili plants are growing, growing quite nicely, but there's never been a blossom yet. And they were all started on the same day. The seeds were all planted December 9th of last year. So I guess Thai chilies take a bit longer. They're probably waiting for some heat. I don't think we've had a day yet that's got up to 20 degrees. Well, this next section will probably be a bit jumpy. I'm hand holding the camcorder. In between the smart pots, I have done some interplanting, planting mostly with herbs, but uh, some other things. I'll run you down the aisle here. I have three different uh, groupings of, of uh, basil. This particular one is a variety package of seeds from Vesey Seeds, and you can probably see the difference in some of the leaves. I'm not sure what any of the varieties are, but they are mostly the green ones. I can see one little red one. It's planted along beside the, the green ones, but it's very small. And opposite it, I've put in four tiny plants of Italian flat-leaf parsley. And then moving here, this is one of the two varieties that uh, Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland, sent me. I think this one is lime basil. It's number 48 on the list that I'll put down below there anyway. Across from it are stevia. I only grew two plants because I wasn't sure if I would like it. And those are just recently transplanted seedlings in here two or three days ago. But they were a bit bigger. I had company, and uh, they wanted to try it, and I wanted to try it too. So I've picked off three or four leaves. 
I kind of like the flavor. I, I wasn't sure if I would like the anise licorice sort of flavor, but it's mild. And it's amazing how sweet it tastes, which I guess doesn't really have sugar. It's just whatever it is triggers your taste buds into thinking that it's tasting something sweet, but it's incredibly sweet. And then there is that volunteer digitalis, but next to it are two tiny little seedlings of red leaf amaranth that I managed to scald the leaves on. But I guess they're coming back. And then over here is another patch of basil from, from Rob. Uh, tetra, I think, red leaf tetra. Two of which are not really red leaves. They're green. They have some red veining. I don't know what that means, Rob. But also I managed to get those leaves wet evidently in the heat of the day. And the one set of leaves on them is kind of scalded. But the new leaves are coming out and looking okay. And here we have the uh, celery. Green soup celery. Uh, which is really small plants. But they've really grown a lot since I put them in the soil in here. And me, who does not like cilantro, this is lime cilantro from Rob. I thought perhaps if it has a, enough lime flavor, I might like it. I haven't really tried it yet, so wait for the plants to get a bit bigger. Along the, in between the rows here in the center, I'm planting, uh, you can see those or not, yeah, I guess you can see them starting to come up there. That is the round black Spanish radish, uh, about a five or six foot row of them there, which will have to be thinned because they need a fair amount of space for each one. And then the plans to go down the rest of the row here is to put in more beets. And I have the seedlings there that are about ready to, to transplant. Um, I can't remember, did I show you this in a moment, a few moments ago or not, but these are the beets that I transplanted earlier and they're doing quite well off to the left there is some charred larger plants but I had never grown beets as seedlings before so pleased to see that they at least made it and they're getting into decent sized plants too early for any beets to be forming on them yet and I don't know I guess I can add it right into this clip here the grapevine uh, this particular one is beta in bloom as you can see and uh, the uh, link that I put I guess it was two videos ago I'm still following that man's advice on growing grapes in a greenhouse I have uh, eliminated all of the clusters except one on each lateral and so far I haven't uh, stopped the lateral from growing uh, I think I'm gonna let it grow till it has maybe seven or eight leaves and then I'll stop it from getting any longer. The other plant is behind me here, the other vine, Somerset, S-O-M, set. Um, and it has a few clusters on it this year. Last year I thought it did, but it didn't produce anything. So this year it's got three or four larger clusters. Hopefully I'll see some grapes out of it this year as well. It's supposed to be a, a seedless variety. I have the first blossoms on the tomato plants, uh, just on two of them. They were, I started one of each of the two varieties sometime in, in mid-March to see if I could get a few earlier tomatoes. Um, I'm only growing two, var two varieties this year, Gardener's Delight and the Yellow Pear, both small tomatoes. The other plants down the row are, are looking good, but they're, they were started a, a month later, so they're not even half the size of these plants. But uh, Nice dark green looking foliage on them anyway. Both fig trees continue to do quite well and they each have a few figs on. I guess you can see that one down in there. They're not huge yet but they are growing so I have hopes of a, a ripe fig. See if I can zoom out here give you a little better look at the tree. I'm just so pleased that they made it through our winter. Organic bag of fertilizer in the picture there too. Well, I think that just about finishes my update in here. Thank you for watching. I will close off with a little look at the uh, Chanticleer chicks, one week old today.